Well, the use of traditional pottery, which lost its sheen due to the use of modern cooking pots, is slowly regaining its popularity. Various entrepreneurs have ventured back into the household ceramics business with an aim of promoting a healthy lifestyle. Teresa Mutai revisits the story of traditional pottery and how the efforts of one lady are breathing life into this trade. <laughs> Traditional pottery as we knew it is slowly dying in Kenya. Before the advent of modern cooking technologies, African traditional pottery was the main method of preparing and cooking meals. But time changed. Today, modern pottery is mainly used for home decor items, which is more lucrative. Despite this, the commitment to revive and add value to the pottery industry pushed an entrepreneur to set up shop and pursue a ceramics venture. There we go. <laughs> we caught up with Clay Republic Commercial Director Nyambura Ndungu, who narrates the birth of the idea to produce and sell clay-based household equipment. She says the earthen taste of water sparked the idea to create a clay water pot. Ndungu partnered with her partner to begin the venture by selling a single water pot sourced from Kakamega. The earthen taste of water is what sparked this idea where you, when it rains, you have that, you smell that smell of, 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 of so, soil. And uh, we remembered that. I think this is something that we used to get sometimes back. With the actualization of selling a water pot, they established the Clay Republic in 2020 with an aim of promoting healthy living. She explains that clay soil is alkaline in nature and the clay pots neutralize the acidity found in some foods and water. To that extent, she realized that the pots would help in reducing the common cases of heartburn caused by acidity. Clay is alkaline in nature. So anything that you put in a clay pot tries to neutralize the acid. So even if you have those problems of acidity, kuchoma, chomeka, so what usually happens once you start drinking water from a clay pot, you find that that problem uh, disappears with time. Through the Clay Republic, Nyamburandungu established a workshop in Kendu Bay and Kakamega employing 40 and 30 women respectively to mold the clay pots and empower them financially. Like the Kendu Bay group has 40. Uh, Kakamega, we have different places and mostly homes that who are, who are doing the pottery. Our catch was, are you able to get a fewer younger women who can be able to continue this pottery when you guys are tired and are not able to make pots anymore. To market her products to a wider audience, Nyambura has employed two employees to sell the finished products in her establishment. Despite having a small space back at home or even not having a fireplace at all, a portable lamp fire got you covered. Clay from each location varies in color, with Kakamega having red clay, while Kendu Bay produces black clay. Sourcing clay is not very hard because it's mostly at the riverbanks, so they are able to tell which, which, which part of the riverbanks have clay. So what we've been doing with them, we have uh, people who are able to help us test the soil. Testing this soil is because we want to make sure that the soil that we're using to make the clay products do not have reed. The pots are then molded and heated in highly concentrated kilns to ensure durability. The pots are later left to dry in the sun to add to their longevity. This entire process from molding to getting the pots to the shop takes two months. She says the designs of the pots are dictated by the customer's designs and needs. On a good month, the business can fetch as much as 300,000 shillings. But when the business is low, revenue can dip to a low of 50,000 shillings a month. The most important thing when it comes to pricing is the size of the pot and the design of the pot. On a good month, we are able to make a profit of around uh, 200, 300. On a bad month, we are able to do 50. 60, they are about. Nyambura Ndungu says the clay cooking materials are a solution to reducing the use of fossil fuel to cook as clay fire pots use less firewood or briquettes for heating and retains heat for up to six hours. 
Once that clay is heated up with the the charcoal that is breaking from the wood, it can be able to take a maximum of six hours when it still maintains the heat within the space that you are in. So there is no, there's, we are trying as much as possible to reduce the amount of wood that is used by the three the three stone. We are also trying to reduce the amount of charcoal that is used. And also we have embraced um, briquettes. Nyambura's long-term plan is to access financing that will help Clay Republic set up a pottery school to train the young generation on various pottery skills. With the emergence of metal cooking pots, clay cooking pots became less popular. But this created a niche in the market for those with the creativity and passion to venture into. For KBC Channel 1, I am Teresa Mutai.